Uh oh. Oh no! I hear the yellow legs. <laughs> what is going on, Cog Squad? How are you guys doing today? Well, I got a plan today. I got a plan. Now, let me tell you guys my plan today. So, as most of y'all know, we got our chickens, our Rhode Island Reds, our future egg layers here on the farm in this portable setup. You know, this all can be moved and relocated very easily. This is our egg mobile, which is on wheels. And I got them out here in the garden area because I want them to fertilize and turn the soil over. And so that's what's going on. But I got an issue. I got an issue. And the issue is, is that these boys and girls as a whole are not wanting to come out. And then if a few of them do come out, they're not wanting to go back up into the egg mobile. But I got a plan. This is the strategy that I think I'm going to take. Now, a lot of y'all suggested I put a ramp right here, and y'all, this is just too tall for a ramp. We've just been raising chickens for almost 20 years, and I just know that ramp is either gonna be too steep, and if I don't make it too steep, then it's probably gonna come on out way out here, and I think it'll be too long. It'll be kind of be like walking on a tightrope, per se. So the ramp really is not gonna work because of the height of this setup. So the stairs are really, really a great option for them. They just hop down. But in the past, what we noticed when we had this over in our other pasture in the uh, original chicken yard, they never even used the stairs anyways to come out. They just hop down. And a lot of them won't even use them, use them to go up because they'll just fly up. So here is my strategy. Now, what I've been doing for up to this point is, is I've been keeping a one feeder and one water down here and one feeder and one water in the egg mobile. And the reason I was doing that is I wanted these guys just to get comfortable with everything. We just moved them over here. I didn't want them to be hanging out in here all day without any food and water or if a few of them came out and some stayed in there. I, I just want them to be comfortable. And that's what I've been doing up to this point. Now, I'm gonna put all their feed and water down here to entice them to come out. And then later today, before it gets dark, I'm thinking mid-afternoon-ish, not mid, probably late afternoon when the sun's still up. That's my plan is to put their feed and water up here on the trailer. Then what I'm hoping that does is, is that entices them and teaches them to go up into this egg mobile in the evening times and roost in here. That is my plan and fingers crossed it works. I got a good feeling about it. Me and Holly's talked about it. Holly says she thinks it's gonna work. Ain't that right, Holly? So let's give it a whirl because these guys are super important to us because I want them to fertilize the soil and I want them to provide our family with rich, beautiful, homegrown eggs here on the farm and homestead. Y'all, Holly's got the zoomies. She has got the zoomies. She has found her uh, a piece of plastic and she gets so excited. I think I just missed it. <laughs> I couldn't get my camera out fast enough. Oh my gracious. Let's see if she does it again here in a minute. All right, she's found something else. So it's on, there we go. <laughs> oh my gracious, she gets so excited. Right, she's gonna come back. She's gonna come back, here she is. <laughs> oh my goodness, Holly. Also, I brought them a little bit of scratch that I'm just gonna sprinkle out on the ground to get them moving around and scratching out here and get comfortable of being outside. Because they're still young. They're really not laying any eggs yet. It's probably gonna be the first of March before they do when they're old enough to start laying eggs. So I'm just trying to get these guys as comfortable as possible. Because less stress means more eggs. So I got all their waters filled up. I got their feeders filled up. Everything's moved outside of the egg mobile. I sprinkled a little bit of scratch on the ground 
to entice them to kind of walk around and scratch around and get used to everything. So let's see what happens when I let them out this morning. Let's see if they see this, because I want them to see it. And that's kind of why I got it right here. So when they come to the edge, they're going to see their feet in waters and come out. That's my plan anyways, but let's see what happens. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Got something for y'all out here. All right, they're following me, they're following me. Let's see, let's see. Look, y'all, look, 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 look. <laughs> you can see they're a little unsure, but there we go. It's working. It's working. They're going straight to the water. Right here. I got another water over here. There they go. Finding the feed, finding the water. Look at here. And just like I said, they, they fly down. They don't walk stairs. Um, if they had a ramp there, they wouldn't walk it down either. For the most part. And that one walked the stairs, didn't it? They would just fly down. All right, so they got four that are a little unsure. The rest are down. And it's actually 13 of these guys. 11 hens and two roosters. There we go. There's another one. There it is. And now we're down to two left up there on the egg mobile. Let's see if these guys come on down. Y'all come on down. All right. It's just one roo left. One rooster left. He's probably the less dominant guy up there. And this rooster down here, these are his ladies. And you can see him, he's a lot bigger. He's right there. He's just a, a way bigger than the girls are and has that larger comb. All right, fella. You're gonna have to come on down, buddy. You can't stay up there all day. You're gonna have to come on down. There you go. There you go, come on. Come on, pal. I may, I may go up there and pick him up and set him out because I don't want him to go without any food or water. Hey, buddy. Come on. There's plenty of room down there for you. Come on. Go on, buddy. Go on. There you go. There you go. So now everybody's out. Good deal. This is the first time I've given them scratch and they just found it. There you go, girls go. I really wanted to come over here. We had some mulch uh, spill out and start spreading that around for me too. So I put some um, scratch over in that area as well. This seems to be working and we'll come back several times throughout the day and check on them and um, see how they're doing. There she goes. <laughs> oh my gracious. All right, y'all have a wonderful day, okay? Y'all, I got a box full of goodies. It is from the Texas boys, and they sent me a box full of fruit tree cuttings. And uh, they sell these fruit tree cuttings on their website. I think he told me they had 140 different types of figs. Whoo, let me show y'all. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm super impressed with these boys. Uh, you're talking about some young men that are doing some amazing things. I mean, they sell leather goods on their website, fruit cuttings. I mean, y'all, just the TexasBoys.com. I'll put a uh, link to their website down below. But they sent me a box full of fruit tree cuttings. They sent me some figs. Number one, they sent me a fig that I've never heard of. But number two, they sent me a fig that I've been wanting for a, for a while and that is kind of hard to find and is supposed to be the best tasting fig or one of the best tasting figs out there. And ironically enough, it's called the Smith fig. 
you know, since I'm super sweet, you know, you would think there would be a uh, super sweet fig, right? <laughs> so, they sent me um, Rondé de Bordeaux. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but they did send me that, uh, which is a fig that I've been wanting. Also, they sent me the Smith fig, which I've been really wanting. That one is special, super special. And they sent me one that I've never heard of, and that's Sister Madeline's Green Greek. So I'm excited about these three figs. These are not figs that are super common. You know, typically your nurseries have figs, like they have your LSUs, they have your Celeste, they have brown turkeys. These figs, for the most part, are not. So that's what makes me excited most about these amazing figs that they sent me. Also, they sent me a Texas white cling free peach. Now this is, I'm super excited about this cause I don't have stone fruit yet on our farm. So we are wanting to grow some stone fruit. So to have a white peach, which is supposed to be the best tasting peach. When you talk to people that are really big into peaches, it's always the white ones that come up. So I'm happy to have those. And they sent me two types of mulberry trees, which are native to our area. So this is awesome. I got a white beauty and the world's best. So I'm stoked about these. And look, they're already budding out. Look at that green budding out coming out on these mulberries. That makes me think that these mulberries are gonna be easy to propagate. I know figs are. I've never done mulberries and I've never done peaches. So to see that budding out right there, that's a great sign. So let me show y'all, if you've never seen us do this before, if you have, then you know what we're gonna do. But I don't wanna get these mixed up. I got my figs here. I wanna go ahead and do my figs first. And what I'm gonna do is I got just some cups that I recycle or save for the most part. And y'all, it's so easy, so, so easy. If you have a fig tree or your friend has a fig tree, listen, you can have as many figs as you want. I'm gonna come down here. I got some just regular potting soil. So all I'm gonna use on these. But you wanna grow in medium, medium of some type. You could use peat. Uh, that would be a good growing medium. You just want to, uh, you want something that those roots are gonna get established in. It's not like seed starting, so, you know, don't have to be sterile. They always want your seed starts to be pretty sterile. I got sweet ants in this bag. They're not biting ants, thank goodness. Sugar ants, but they're not gonna hurt anything. Got Miss Holly on the scene over here. What you got, Holly? At our other place, at our other farm, I didn't have a greenhouse like this, okay? And I started these guys on my back porch. So having a greenhouse is not crucial cause for the first few weeks, I really want these guys to be in the shade. I don't want them to be in the sun. And I do have a shade cloth up on our greenhouse. And as some of y'all say, we should take it down for the winter. But honestly, it's a hundred with the shade cloth and the sides open in December. It's a hundred degrees in here. so. I don't want to take the shade cloth off. I really don't. The key to cuttings, for me, my success has been two things after I get them in the dirt. And that's keeping them moist. Do not let them dry out. I'm not talking about saturated, floating in water, consistent moisture. So keeping the guys moist and do not let them get super cold. That's been my two key successes of doing fruit cuttings, fruit tree cuttings. I'll probably move these guys in the garage actually until they start, um, until I start seeing them make some roots. And you'll see some greenage come on or anything, something like that. I wanna keep them in the shade. I don't want them in the direct sun right now. So moist, don't let them get cold or a warm spot and not direct sunlight right now. Uh, a, a great spot and I've done it before. Just my only problem with it is it's out of sight, out of mind. And that is uh, I have grown these guys or got them to root on top of the refrigerator. Take a plastic bag, just like one of these, take your fruit cuttings, take a moist paper towel, wrap the bottom. You could put your rooting hormone on there, 
wrap the bottom of that, you know, couple of inches on the bottom of your cutting there with that moist paper towel, put a rubber band around it or somebody doesn't come loose, put it in your Ziploc bag, seal it up and put it on top of the refrigerator. It is the perfect uh, environment for fruit cuttings on top of that refrigerator because your refrigerator will put, up, put, uh, put off a little bit of heat and so you got the moisture already in there. The only thing is, is for me, when I tried it, I had a 50-50 rate because half the time I would forget they were up there. Out of sight, out of mind. You don't think about uh, on top of the refrigerator, but it does work. All right, so I got my, I went ahead and pre-moistened my soil. To me, it's just easier that way. You don't have to worry about your cutting floating up or anything like that. So I just went ahead and pre-moistened my soil. I got my rooting hormone. Again, you don't have to have the rooting hormone, but it's kind of like a little bit of insurance. That's all. I got the end of my cutting wet, dipped it in the rooting hormone, and we're just going to stick it in there. That's it. That's it, y'all. Honestly, that's it. That's all it takes. Dip my end in rooting hormone. And we're just going to put it in that sole. And mark it. All right, got the figs done and we're fixing to do the rest of them, the mulberries and the peaches. All right, so part two of my plan with training the new egg layers are Rhode Island Reds to go up into the coop at night. So hopefully I'm getting them where they're not as nervous for coming out. Now I gotta see if I can start getting them to go up. So I'm gonna go in there. It's, uh, it's about three o'clock. I'm gonna put their food and water on or in the egg mobile and see if that entices them to go up before it gets dark. Chickens are eating machines. Look at y'all, we already got one up there. Look at that, that's exciting. That is super exciting. But chickens are eating machines. These guys, if you never owned chickens before, compared to their size, they eat a lot. They pretty much eat all day for, you know, for the most part. Let's see here, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm glad that one was up there. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Go ahead and move their feeders and waters on top here. All right, y'all. Oh, there's several in there, y'all. One, two, there's three in there. All right, three's good. That's good. All right, let's put their feed. I'm gonna put it up here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this water maybe right here. Let's take that back. Let's put this feeder right here and maybe a water right around in there. And put this big feeder up top here. All right. It is a little early. We got another probably hour and a half, two hours before it gets dark, but I don't want to wait too late, you know, because I want these guys, you can see them, they're already, they're already checking it out. See that? So if I can entice these guys to go up inside, um, I think this is, this is looking promising. So later tonight, we'll come back and check and see if any went up and if they did, how many did go up. Oh, you wanna go check the game cameras? Come on, we'll check them. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on. Let's go check them. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let's go check the game cameras. So far, still nothing on the game cameras. Nothing. So whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it's gone. I've been leaving it up and checking it daily just to see if we do capture anything, but so far, nothing. Zero. Zilch. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Come on, let's go check the game cameras. Come on. 
All right, you guys, let's go look. See if we got anything on here. Oh, what you got, what you got, what you got? Hey, buddy. I don't think we got anything, sir. I really don't. No. Nope. I don't think we got anything, buddy. Yeah. All right, y'all. Still nothing on the game camera, so I am think I'm pretty much giving up on catching something over here, but we'll, uh, we'll leave it here for now. It's not hurting anything, so uh, we'll just leave it here for now, and <laughs> maybe we'll catch something, but right now, zero, zilch, nada. I mean, nothing. And I'm guessing that these uh these are definitely something's been rooting on top of the ground. It's not coming from the bottom up. It's coming from the top. And I'm still leaning towards armadillo. I really am. That's what I'm leaning towards, the armadillo. All right, so Brooke just sent me a text and said that she is making jambalaya tonight. That's what I'm talking about. And I think after I eat the jambalaya for supper tonight, We'll come out and see if those chickens went up. All right, so it looks good and it smells delicious. How is it? I just had, I must confess, a little bite. Yeah. But in that little bite, That's there's good. tons of flavor. It's mm. good. Mm, well, I'm fixing to dig in myself then. It's delicious. Mm, it looks so good. You help me put the uh, chickens up? Sure. Okay. I'm hoping we don't have to do anything but shut the door. I hope not, too. <laughs> if, my, if my plan works. After eating this, I don't know if I'm going to feel like chasing chickens. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. It's really good. So we're fixing to go see if these chickens are up. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm thinking half of them. I think half of them went up. Jason, look. Yeah. There's no way I can chase six and a half chickens. Because <laughs> you ate too much gumbo? Hey, no. Jambalaya. Jambalaya. Sorry. We got Holly. We got Gidget. I don't think Gidget needs to go out. <laughs> we'll have to have a search party on her. <laughs> we think chasing six and a half chickens is bad. Chasing that five pound butcher would oh, be a mess, wouldn't it? Would be a mess. Okay, Gidget. I think I'm gonna hold you and let Daddy take Holly out first. And Arlo, you don't need to go either because a darn you know, owl be gonna swoop him up. We would have to have a bell, and that's gonna disturb the chickens. We get my my uh, slippers off and my boots on. <laughs> I should have wore my jacket. It's cooling off. Well, I was, you know, I was. It was in my mind that I may need my jacket. It is cooling off. I mean, I would, I would be happy if half of them went up. And we're just experimenting. Well, certainly, but you know, I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna say they're, they are all up because I just want to be positive. Ah, uh, well, that'd be wonderful. I don't really think that. You don't really think that? No. <laughs> You're but, just putting out positive thoughts. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you yeah. think positive, does it happen? You may they have call to... that something. I forget what it's called. It's called positive. Okay, so we're about halfway there. And if y'all aren't up and you hear my voice, please do so now. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go right here. Holly says so, right? Holly don't like going the other way. Get a tick down there, Holly. Okay, girl. Come on. Come on, Holly. Oh, Holly's like, she's the gate guard. She'll come in. Guardian. Who knows what's on her mind? She's gonna come in though. All right. Make sure I cut this fence off. Off? I hear them. Huh? I heard something. Is it off? It's off. Uh oh. Oh no! I hear them. the yellow legs. <laughs> How many is it though? I don't know. Not six and a half, I hope. I see. 
Four. I think I see four. I see three. Yep, four, four. chickens. Okay. Well, at least a hawk didn't get to make that half. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Come here, girl. I got two. Oh, where did number three go? She's back there. I couldn't grab her. I couldn't. I couldn't carry that many. So four for the for the uh, first go round. That's not that bad. I'll take I'll take the four. I'll take the four. It could have been worse. Yeah, it definitely could have been worse than four. I'm gonna go ahead and put their food and stuff down for tomorrow. So you know this last one's gonna give us a run for a month. Uh, what's, what was crazy is that they kind of came up to me. Did that one do you that way? Well, she was crouched down by the tire. They walked right up to me and I just gently grabbed them. What? She's on your side. Yeah, she's on my side. She's coming my way. Okay, girl. Got it. Oh, good catch. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> Good catch. You know, my 13-year-old may be younger than me, uh -huh. but I learned my skills from her. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. How are you late? Okay, girls and boys. Night, night. You got We're that still, door? Still doing the double locking. Yeah. And I think we'll continue. Yeah, I think so. That's going to be their roosting spot. We even talked about taking this roost out. So they're just going to lay eggs over here. That's right. But we're not to that point. No, so. not at all. Four is better than 13. Four is better than 13. Look at the moon. Oh, it's beautiful. It's big. Look at the moon, Holly. It is huge. Isn't it pretty? Look at her. Hey, pretty girl. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> is your work day over? It is over. Hers fixing to go in. Congratulations to a day. Well done. <laughs> she's fixing to go in and, and call it a day and retire, I can tell you. Yeah, well, she sleeps well at night. She sleeps really good at night. But you know what we gotta do before we go back? What's that? Flip that charger back on. Cut it back on. I actually need to roll the greenhouse sides down too. Alright. Good well, deal. So, maybe tomorrow, three will be out. Maybe.